What's up, Gray Wolf? This is uh, James Parrish, uh, Smoking Face Pelt Outdoors. And uh, this video is going to be the response video to Bill Blust's uh, Gray Wolf Outdoors challenge for me to share with you my pack load out. Uh, I sent to him over the weekend last weekend uh, a photo uh, of the weight of my pack after a year-long journey of trying to reduce my pack weight. I will show you that photo here at the uh, at the end of the video. I'm going to try and keep this to about 20 minutes. I don't want to go too far. Uh, I don't want to give a bunch of bunch of detail, but I just want to give you a quick overview of of the uh, the things that I have in this loadout that has gotten me to where I am. A little over a year ago, uh, Bill and I were talking, and my my base weight for my pack without food and water was uh, just over 70 pounds. It was like 71.6 pounds. Uh, with food and water, I was pushing 80 pounds easily uh, carrying my pack. And uh, that was not good for me. I had a hard time with that. I could do it, but I, it was very difficult to, to walk a lot of miles carrying that. started the first big change was the pack itself uh, I used to use a snug pack Bergen which is their larger rocket pack uh, it was a hundred plus liter I think it was like 115 liter setup fantastic bag uh, but it was just heavy uh, this is the Teton Sports Grand 5500 it is their largest pack it is uh, 95 liters so I've come down a little bit but by getting rid of a bunch of the excess stuff uh, I've been able to make this work there's still plenty of room in here I have lots of adjustment I've got it cinched down uh, quite a bit the top of the brain has nothing in it I keep snacks in that pouch uh, so that I can unzip the zipper is on the back by my head by the back of my head I can reach behind me and unzip it and get a snack bar out or whatever jerky uh, without having to take the pack off but that is completely empty. I don't keep a lot in the brain. Uh, this particular pack is a lot like the Ospreys and some of the other higher end bags. The brain system is removable. You don't have to use it. Um, I leave it on because it's part of the water protection and they don't overfill it. But it gives me that as an option. To, uh, if I need it, I can. I have it. Um, let's start with the outside of the pack. Uh, on the straps, I have a, an eyeglass case so I can switch between regular glasses and sunglasses if I need them. On the right strap, I have my pace counting beads. On the left belt, I keep my, my compass. On the right belt is a pouch for like um, snacks. I used to keep a compass in that until I got the compass pouch. Uh, so now I keep in there um, trail mix, so peanut M&Ms, peanut butter M&Ms, something like that that's quick and easy to access. Usually I'll keep a pouch of drink mix in there or a little tube of like the Noon, uh, N-U-U-N Noon um, electrolyte tabs that I can add to, to water to replenish my electrolytes or to offset the taste of water that you know might have some flavor to it after I filter it and purify it. But that's, that's on uh, the strap side. On what would be my right side wearing it. I keep, uh, I have a, a expandable pouch and I have access to the inside, the main pouch. There's really only the two expandable pouches uh, and then one separate pocket and then the main compartment. Uh, the other two access points are access to the inside. This one I keep uh, my fire kit and my first aid kit so I can get to them very quickly, easily accessible without having to dig into the whole pack or dig down in there to find them. I keep um, a carabiner on each side. It's a night eye slide lock carabiner. Uh, I keep my Crocs, which are my camp shoes and my water crossing shoes. So I keep those out there so they can dry and they're not very heavy. They're water, you know, they're safe. The, the rain's on them or whatever. So I keep them out of the pack. Uh, easy to get to, whatever. I don't have anything in the expandable pouch right now, but I usually keep 
a one or a one and a half liter smart water bottle with a standard cap on it for extra water and I will keep a uh, 16.9 ounce smart water bottle with a sport cap that I can filter water into. I like the smart water bottles because they fit onto the Sawyer Squeeze uh, just fine. Uh, I'll show you my water system when we get to the inside, but uh, I use that so that I can filter the water into either the CNOC bladders, uh, is what I use for collection and, and storage, uh, and then those smart water bottles are really easy for me. And the 16.9 is because almost all of your uh, drink flavor mixes or your noon tabs are designed for a 16.9 ounce water bottle uh, to mix with them, so that's why I carry that. So that would be my extra water storage. Uh, in the hydration bladder uh, pouch inside the pack, I keep my water filtration, which is, again, a 3-liter CNOC dirty water bag, a 2-liter CNOC clean water bag, um, Sawyer squeeze filter, and then a, a replacement uh, adapter collar and some caps so that if I lose a cap or break a cap or whatever, I don't lose that whole water system. Uh, I have a couple of spares in there and I keep that in a zipper pouch that is mesh front so that it can dry. So that's this side, not a whole lot there, but that's what would go there. This side, I keep uh, another carabiner to hang a camp towel or a washcloth, or if I've done a water crossing, I'll put my Crocs one on each side so they can dry out faster, uh, or whatever side the sun is on. Whatever. Anyway, that's, I keep that there. I have an Enzo Necker that Terry Taylor modified for me to make it match my pack system. It's black, orange, and gray custom sheath that has a uh, molly type uh, connector so that it sits on the strap. It also has an eyelet on it so that I can put it on my lanyard um, and use it as a neck knife. So versatile there. This is really the only knife I carry with this for camp chores, processing down wood, feather sticking. It's not a big knife, but I don't do a lot of that when I'm doing this kind of camping and hiking. So this knife is more than sufficient for that. In this side expandable pouch, I keep my heavy cover titanium GI mess kit. It is a 37 ounce titanium canteen. The entire thing is titanium, including the cap. Uh, it does come with a plastic, see, I think Sierra cap or anyway, it does come with that. I don't use it. I like the, uh, the titanium cap. Uh, it has the nesting uh, cup and the cup has a lid which I keep down in the bottom. It's the kidney style, so it fits around the GI shaped canteen. I keep that. Uh, both vessels are uh, fire safe, so I can uh, boil and purify water in it uh, to have a hot drink or to have a, a backpacking meal, whatever. But this is my emergency cook kit. Uh, in the one pouch of this, it has molly, so I can put it on my belt or whatever. In the one pouch, I keep a couple, uh, there's four Esbit tabs in there, so I can use that to, to boil the water if I need to. The other pouch, I keep a uh, clipper lighter, a little folding pocket knife that I use for food only. It's a, a man sheep, uh, sheep's foot, and I use it only for food preparation and eating. And then I keep my coffee scoop, which is hand carved by Tracy Detweiler for me. Really love that. That is my... This is my uh, water, primary water carrying and drinking, and then my emergency backup uh, cook kit. So that's that. Um, this is my camping pack chair. Uh, I sometimes will carry my Thermarest um, sit pad or kneel pad. It's lighter than the chair, but the chair is by far more comfortable, so I go onto the chair. That straps to the top. I'll just take it off so it's out of the way. But that's my pack chair. I'm not going to go through a lot of details. I've done another video on that. Um, this pouch here, this is the only separate pouch. I keep my, uh, if I'm carrying my full cook kit, I carry my utensils. So in this little pouch is a, a pair of high temp GSI outdoors um, silicone tongs, a spatula, and a serving spoon. <coughs> <clears throat> if I'm not carrying the full cook kit, I don't carry that. Um, if I'm not carrying the full kit, cook kit, it will just be the stove and this, and that would be so I could heat the water and uh, put it in my pack meals or whatever. So my normal eating utensils are 
Tokes Titanium Long Handle Spork and Spoon, both are in here. These work just fine. So if I'm working with just the stove and this, this is sufficient. I can get down into the, uh, the backpacker uh, pantry or whatever, the, the backpacking meal, I can get down into the bags with the long handle. So I like that. Then my stove uh, system is the Firebox Titanium Nano. I really like this stove. Uh, the X case gives me stability because it locks the legs into place. So I can use that to, to cook on. Um, I can use twigs. I can use uh, pine needles. I can use pine cones, leaves, small sticks. I can take like a little over arm size and I can quarter them up and make a Swedish fire stove. I can use wood pellets. Um, I can use the Esbit fuel tabs on the fuel plate. So there's a lot of options with this and I like it because it's fully contained, it's small, and I can use it inside the vestibule of my tent in really crappy weather. So that's my, my stove system. I'm going to go ahead and just stuff that back in there and then we're going to move to the inside. I'm about 13 minutes right now and I really want to just go through this again if you have questions. I'm not going to give a lot of detail. Uh, private message me, ask in the comments, uh, ask on the thread and I will gladly respond to you. I can give you specific weights, I can give you cost, I can give you links to where I bought stuff, I can give you more information if you want it, but uh, I just want you to get an overview and I don't want to take a bunch of your time. I really want to try and keep it under 25 minutes. So let's just go ahead and power forward. I told you on the brain, I do not keep, uh, I don't have a lot of anything in it. I keep uh, snack foods in the outer pocket in the inner pocket. I'm just going to uh, open it up and show you there's an inner zipper down here in that. I keep my uh, waterproof map case and my map of where I'm going to be. I keep a pair of work gloves, mechanics leather reinforced padded work gloves. I keep um, a write in the rain notebook. I keep uh, a sharpie fine, mark, uh, fine point marker a gel pen and a number two pencil that I can sharpen with my pocket knife or my, you know, my side, uh, my sheath knife. I can keep that sharpened and um, that's pretty much all I keep in there. Sometimes I'll keep a little tube, a little uh, spray tube of insect repellent, DEET insect repellent. And then I keep um, a little combination tube that has lip balm with SPF and uh, sunblock to put on my, my hands or my face or whatever. Usually I wear a lightweight, breathable, long sleeve shirt so my arms are fine, but just to cover the, the couple of things, I have, my hands, my face, my ears, uh, so that I'll keep in there as well. And then like my wallet, my keys, and my phone, if I'm doing a water crossing, I keep a little blue, uh, I don't think it's even five liters, probably three liters, three and a half liter dry bag. Keep my keep the things that are are not water safe. I'll put those in that dry bag and keep that in there for a water crossing or if it's heavy rain or whatever. I just don't want them in my pockets. Those will go in there. Um, the drawstring closure is a dual closure, so the inner one and then the outer one to cinch it down. There's still plenty of room. There's lots of space that I'm not using. I can undo that, and that's where my food bag would go. Uh, I keep on the outer drawstring a um, Streamlight Nano light so that I can see down into my pack in the dark without having to you know, take everything out or get a big flashlight or whatever. This, um, this little gear hammock, I don't know what you'd call it, but it was designed by, uh, by Teton to hold repelling or climbing rope. I don't carry repelling or climbing rope. So in that, I keep my full-blown uh, Frog Togs rain gear. So if it's really bad, that would be the rain gear that I would wear. But that's, I don't always carry that. And if I don't, then what I put up here instead of my Frog Togs would be my, uh, my puffy coat. But if I'm carrying the extra rain gear, that's what goes there in that. So I'm going to close that back up. We don't need it to stay open. That's what's there. And again, I don't keep a lot of stuff in the brain. The brain is removable. I don't keep a lot of stuff in it. So next would be this little pouch that uh, is disconnectable from the front with, uh, with buckles. And then the buckles actually buckle together 
The straps come out and it buckles together to make a small, very small little summit pack so I can carry my stove and like a pack meal and just some basic items so I can cook and then obviously on my belt would be my canteen or whatever, but just some basic items that if I were going to do a little day trip and go up to like a summit or whatever, this little pack. In this, I don't want to spend a lot of time, but in this is my um, This is the, the rain cover, which is actually a, uh, a poncho, and the poncho has the tie-outs, so I keep a paracord ridge line with the prussic loops and the uh, night eyes slide lock carabiners so that I can adjust and tighten the ridge line and the, the, uh, use this as a tarp shelter in an emergency, and then I keep the micro cord for the tie-outs to keep it tied down in the wind. And then I keep a roll of uh, Gorilla Tape, one inch Gorilla Tape that is my pack repair, tent repair, and, um, and then tarp shelter repair. So that's what I keep in there. And that is my, while I'm hiking, my basic rain gear. But then uh, the next would be the tent itself. I just want to give you a little bit of, of information on it. I know Bill said it wasn't necessary, but basically I just want to tell you what it is and why I picked it. My original tent weighed almost 7 pounds. Um, 6.7 I think is what it weighed. And this is the Big Agnes Copper Spur UL2, uh, HV UL2 Mountain Glow Edition. If you're familiar with Big Agnes, their tents are usually really bright orange colored, orange and like white. Uh, Mountain Glow I went with because the bulk of it is a, a dark charcoal gray with a light gray and then some of the orange accents, which is fine. I don't, I don't care, but it's not super bright. And because I have the other items to use for emergency signaling, I don't need my tint to be super bright. But the big reason I went with it, too, is um, the Mountain Glow Edition has a little battery pack and sewn into the tint lining is ribbon LEDs. Um, printed ribbon LEDs that I can then use for uh, low light or bright light inside my tent for finding something at night or whatever. I don't have to dig out a flashlight. I can just reach up and turn it on. Uh, and then the other reason was tent uh, poles, titanium stakes, uh, rain fly, footprint, all of it just over two pounds. So I went from almost seven to just over, I think, 2.3 pounds. So less than half the weight, and that's why I wanted to include it because it was a huge part of my weight reduction. All right, moving on to the, um, the inside of the pack. I'm just gonna use the, the front area here to show you what's in there. Again, I'm not gonna go through a lot of detail. I'm just gonna show you what it is if you have questions. I can do another video with uh, you know details of the individual things, or I can just explain it to you. I can give you weights and links and prices and whatever. So inside, I keep my my battery and electronics pack. In this, I have a um, a battery uh, a battery pack to recharge my phone and my watch. It'll uh, charge my phone four times and my watch once. The watch will last a week on a charge. So no big deal there. Uh, I keep spare AAA batteries. The Mountain Glow uh, power pack on the tent is AAA. Um, my flashlight is AAA. My headlamp is AAA. So that's, I keep all of that in here. A spare set of batteries and flashlight, headlamp, power pack, battery bank, all of that. Uh, next would be my Eddie Bauer uh, 650 power field down puffy jacket. This is my cool weather, you know, cool weather jacket. This is a three season plus loadout. The tent is a three season tent. And so I'm not usually going out in heavy, heavy winter. I live in New Mexico, so strong cold winter is not very long anyway. So three seasons is more than sufficient. But uh, this is my puffy jacket, which is part of my sleep system, part of my cold weather gear. So multi-purpose. Next would be this 20 liter dry bag, I don't have 20 liters in there, but all of my stuff that is not water protected, uh, water safe, 
I can open this up and it all fits in this 20 liter bag. That's why I carry it instead of a smaller one. So if I need to protect everything, I can get it all into this. Um, in here is my complete change of clothing. I keep uh, moisture wicking underwear and t-shirt. I keep uh, liner socks. I keep wool hiking socks. I keep a pair of pants and I keep another outer shirt. Complete set of clothing that's also part of my cold weather sleep system is I will put on my cold weather uh, base layer which is part of my sleep system clothing I'll show you in a little bit and clean clothes and then layer up with the, the outer wear to, uh, to stay warm. Next would be my hygiene and potty kit. I'm not going to go into all the details in there but all of that is in there along with my daily vitamins and supplements and whatever that's all in there. Next would be my full cook kit. Um, sometimes I'll exchange this out for the Tokes 1100 milliliter if I'm just doing pack meals. The 1100 pot, a uh, 1.1 liter pot, will be enough water for me to make any of my pack meals and usually a, a cup of tea or coffee or something like that, hot cocoa. So sometimes I'll change this out, but this is my Tokes 2000 milliliter or 2 liter uh, titanium pot. My inside is my Tokes uh, titanium bowl, which I use to eat my oatmeal in the morning or soup or whatever, I'm gonna do that. And that nests on my Tokes 550 milliliter cup, which I use for coffee, tea, hot cocoa, whatever. All of that is inside along with my cleaning uh, sponge and my um, Camp Suds, the little sheets, the dissolvable sheets, that's in there. And uh, then under that is my heavy cover 8 inch titanium skillet with folding handle. And inside that is my Tokes titanium plate. So that's my entire cook kit, uh, like a pound and a half with everything in there. So that's that. Next would be my fire kit in a 5 liter dry bag. Um, I use a bigger dry bag so that if I collect... Uh, you know, tinder materials or whatever, I can open this up and I can store tinder materials in there. There's plenty of room in the pack to fit that, but that's everything in there is kind of surefire. I keep uh, a lightning strike lighter, I keep uh, petroleum jelly soaked cotton balls, I keep birch bark, and I keep a fat rope stick. So, plenty of ways to get fire going in any weather conditions. Next would be my uh, first aid kit. It is not a full-blown trauma kit, but it is more than just a boo-boo kit. Um, I've got the Adventure Medical Kits uh, Mountain Series Backpacker two-person four-day kit that I have modified to, to take my prescriptions and I put my own painkillers and stuff like that. Stuff that, that is based on my needs. And then I've added a couple of extra instruments and some uh, not huge trauma items but you know like quick clot and some bigger bandages and stuff like that are in there and then some leuco tape for blisters or whatever that's in there the last item inside the main pack is the water kit we talked about uh cnoc bags three liter dirty water two liter fresh water or filtered water so your squeeze in the mesh pack so it'll dry and that is the contents of the main pack Last but not least, and I think we are going to get this just over 25 minutes, uh, is the sleep system itself. And again, I'm not going to go through a lot of details, but I will just show you what the sleep system is. In the yellow dry bag is the clothing portion of the sleep system. It is heavy wool socks. It is a synthetic buff or gaiter and skull cap. There is a wool watch cap or beanie. There is a pair of wool uh, fingerless gloves that have the mitten part that comes over so I have full access to use my hands but then keep the fingers warm with the mitten part. And then there's Omni Wool wool thermal base layer. And um, I think that's it for the clothing part. And then I have a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite two and a half inch insulated sleep mat, inflatable mattress, and then a Trekology inflatable pillow for comfort. I have a Aegis Max compressible down, uh, packable down mummy bag. I have Aegis Max packable down booties. So again, layering for my feet. If my feet get cold, I get cold. 
Otherwise, I'm fine. So those are to keep my feet warm when it's really, really cold over the wool socks and all of that. And then the last piece is a piece I modified. This is a double black diamond packable down throw that I got at Costco. And I modified it by taking it, laying it out, folding it in, sewing the bottom all the way across, and then a third of the way up the folded in seam to make an enclosed foot box. So when I inflate my air mattress, lay out my uh, sleeping bag, then this all slides over and all that is into the foot box to keep it all together. And then it provides another layer of down. So between the layers of clothing and base layer and puffy jacket and um, insulated sleep mat and uh, sleeping bag and blanket, all of that, I, uh, I figured out that my survival rating based on the clothing and stuff that I have here is about 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Comfort rating is about 20 to 22 degrees. Um, but in the conditions that I go out in, it is more than sufficient. And that is my complete breakdown. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, comments, concerns, whatever. You want details, uh, send me a private message, put it in the comments below. Put it on the uh, Facebook string. Let me know. I'll be more than happy to provide anything else. The last thing you guys are probably wondering is what is my pack weight down to? What caused all of this? And let me just show you the picture that I sent to Bill. This is the weight that I measured without food and water. 33.78 pounds everything that I just showed you. So sub 35 pounds down from over 70 pounds a year ago with my old kit. Hope you guys got something useful out of this and enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.